Okay, so I like a lot of these changes. I'm for the universal DH. I'm for, uh, you know, start a guy at second base, shortened season. Are you a baseball purist? Does this bother you? No, I, I'm excited about it. And, and would you say a baseball purist? I, I appreciate what's gone on in the past. I respect it. But look, I'm, I'm open for, for change. I'm open for tweaking things. And, um, you know, with what's gone on uh, in our world, there is an opportunity right now for baseball to, to tweak some things. So we've got the 60-game season. So every game means something. Uh, we've got the universal DH. We're going to put a runner on second base in extra innings. We're, we're tweaking the rosters. Uh, you know, how are people going to approach uh, pitching situations? I, there's so many different things that I think on paper right now we say, well, how's this going to work? How's that? And over these 60 games, we're going to see things evolve. It may start out, hey, we're going to approach something one way and then we'll change to another. But this is all going to be real interesting. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. The pandemic part of it, um, you know, listen, I, I've said this before. If I was a 27-year-old great athlete, yeah, I, I, I read the data. I, I look at it, and I'd, I'd be all in on it. Would you, would, would, with all the things you read, living in California and the cases, yeah. and w- w- would you be all in to play? So I, I have to put myself, you know, go back 30 years and get in that mentality where, as an athlete, I thought I was invincible. So, you know, do that now, 100%, I'm all in. And I have the responsibility, I have to take it upon myself. I've got to be, I've got to be careful. I've got to keep distance. I've got to, you know, follow protocol. I, I, I've got to wash hands. I've got to, you know, those sorts of things. I, I think that, you know, right now, you know, you've got to kind of learn to live with what's out there right now. And uh, I know that if I were playing and I wasn't, and it's all about me, right? It's just about me. It's, I, I don't have family or I don't have kids that may be susceptible to things, you know, no extenuating circumstances all about, do I want to play and can I play? I'd be all in. You know, baseball's always been, I mean, I imagine when you played in the game with 162 games, you would like break it off into quarters or something. Now, now it's just basically a sprint. Well, Tell, take me to the mental side of going from the longest league to now it's 70% of the NBA season, only 60 games. Well, so I, I, I like the urgency, and I almost liken it to what college football is and why it's so exciting is every game means something. So as a baseball player, you can, you can rationalize things. I, I, I get off to a slow start. I can say, well, I, I, I've got time to catch up, or I try to pace myself. But this is almost, hey, look, at from the get-go, I've got to be ready to go. And the guys that are ready to go and the teams that are ready to go are the ones that I, I think, obviously, they're, they're going to separate themselves. So the mental approach is going to be completely different. And that's what I think, you know, look, it's not going to, it might not necessarily be the most talented team that wins. And it's going to be the team that can adapt to things, the team that really stays the most healthy, and the team that is really committed to one another. Because, again, you're going to have some protocol and some things that you're going to have to follow. And you're going to have to be, you know, respectful to your teammates. You're going to have to be committed to your teammates, meaning, look, at it, I can't be going out. I can't be doing things. I've got to get back to my house. I've got to, and those things, uh, those things will be interesting. You know, the universal DH, uh, I've, I, I'm a believer that the more big, strong athletes mm-hmm. that play on my television, the better sports is. I never... You know, I, I did play-by-play out of college. Like, I get the double switch. I get it. But I love the universal DH because it's another big stick. You know, it gives guys like you a chance to play another three or four years. Like, as a player, how do you see it? You, you were a National League guy for a lot right. of it. So, you know, you know, but now the American League rule is going to be adapted by, uh, adopted by the NL. What do you make of the universal DH? So I, I, I like it. I, you know, and I, I like the fact that there's going to be more offense. I like the fact that, look at the strategy now is, if you're in the National League, there's always that out, you know, the pitcher that you could navigate towards. Well, now you don't have that. So will pitching be a bit different? Uh, you know, do I leave my starters in longer? I want to see more offense. I hope that, you know, the universal DH is something that we see well beyond this season. Uh, but again, this is one of those things that whether it's the universal DH, whether it's the extra inning uh, tweak where we put the run on second – there is going to be an opportunity to do some things that 
that may last well beyond this year. Now, I could make an argument that veteran teams would have an advantage. You know, veteran teams, uh, they know it, it, it's, this will play like feel like a three-month playoff. Or I could argue veteran players need time. I mean, mm-hmm. the Nats last year, some of their older players got off to a slow start. Does the shortness and urgency of the season... My gut feeling it helps veteran teams, but veteran players, the Jeters of the world at the end are like, no, it takes me, it takes me to June in the heat to get going. How do you feel about that? So I think if you asked any team in a regular season or any organization, if you were to tell them with 60 games left in the season that they were in first place, would they go for it? Everyone would say yes. Well, that's the case we have now. So what's going to separate them? I think a lot of what's going to separate them, what have these guys been doing in the off season, quote unquote off season, these last few months? How well have they kept themselves in shape? I also believe that how you start the first two or three weeks is really going to dictate, you know, how committed you will be to the season. So if if I'm a team and I, I start off and I'm, you know, two and sixteen or something like that. You know, look at I, I'm probably throwing away the rest of the year. Right. And 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 not that you would ever acknowledge it. But the reality is there's going to be a lot of trials and tribulations that you're going to have to battle through. And if you've already knocked yourself out in the first two or three weeks, you're going to say, oh, man. But if I'm involved and I think I've got a chance and I've started off well and I'm the Pirates or I'm the Marlins or I'm then I'm like, I'm all in. I'm ready to go. I don't I don't think the veteran versus young, I, I will go back to this, the most mature team, meaning the most disciplined, and the team that was also the group of guys that have kept themselves in shape for the last few months. He had five years in the bigs with 30-plus homers and 100 ja- uh, RBI, and he's Eric Karros, and he's got a beard now and a little gray hair, <laughs> but he still looks vibrant and dynamic, and I love seeing you, and I can't wait to watch some baseball, Eric. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you, Colin. Be well, bud. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.